Doom 2016 brought old school gaming back. Tired of having to hide in a corner to heal yourself, and from taking turns to shoot at each enemy, Doom brought a combat system where, to survive, you must fight. With an emphasis on movement and close range attacks, Doom 2016 transformed the power fantasy experience of its time. You are the Doom Slayer, an unstoppable force that will destroy all demons standing in your way. But in 2020, its software decided that that wasn't enough. With Doom Eternal, it wanted to create a game that allows players to continue that fantasy, but it must be earned through skill and precise understanding of its mechanics. You aren't unstoppable simply because of your thumping strength. To become unstoppable, you must master each arena, know how to face every enemy, and optimize your weapons. Basically, you have to become a real-time strategist. Thus, Doom Eternal is not just a game of shooting and running around, but a game of strategy. Let me explain first. When playing Doom Eternal, the objective is simple. See that over there? If you press this button, that thing goes boom! Great! Now you know everything you need about the game. Nah, just kidding. At its core, Doom Eternal is simply that. Point and shoot. But it's in how it's implemented that makes the game go from just another shooter into a strategy game. It's your skill in shooting and reasoning that will determine whether you survive each encounter or not. For example, as soon as you start the game, you get a shotgun and three enemies that teach you the basics. Aim, shoot, and move to the next combat zone. And if you see someone glowing blue, grab your chiropractor license and attend your patient. As you continue advancing, you'll come across a OH MY GOD LOOK AT TOY! As you keep going, you'll find a weapon upgrade station, where you can choose between two options to upgrade your shotgun. A grenade that goes Kaboom! Or one that goes <laughs> Usually, I prefer to go with the grenade. Kaboom! Now that we have a weapon and a variation on how to use it, the game immediately places three enemies together, making us think. With three enemies in front of you, will you shoot each one, wasting three bullets, or will you throw a grenade to falter them all and perform a glory kill on each one? Exactly! Throwing a single grenade is your best option. That way you will fuck! Well, don't worry. Just throw another grenade to incapacitate the other two. But could you aim properly, please? Oh, oh no, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to scream at you like that. It, it was my intention. Hey. How about we go and rape and tear some demons, huh? And now that you have the basics down, you arrive at your first combat arena, where you face three different types of demons. Zombies, soldiers, and imps. Each one has its own perk. The soldier has a weapon that shoots plasma balls. The imp runs around and throws fireballs that deal considerable damage, but are easy to dodge. And the zombie's just there. These three demons fall in a category that the game calls fodder. And why are they called fodder? Well, because with a simple shotgun and an upgrade, you can do this. Oh no, you've run out of bullets! I wonder if there's a tool that let us recover some of them? Do you know? The chainsaw, besides being a tool that makes a tree go boom, it also helps you recover ammo. Why? I have no idea. So, find the nearest enemy and go... Hey, I've got bullets again! And look at this great detail. In less than 10 minutes, this game has already taught you the fundamentals that you'll use from the beginning to the end. Aim, shoot, move, chainsaw. Really, that's all. How is the maternal strategy game? And all I have to say is to SHUT THE FUCK UP! It's in those four fundamentals where the perfect balance between weapons, enemies, and the level design makes it a strategy game. 
to start, each enemy has a function on the battlefield that will affect how you move, which weapon you use, and how you engage with first. In short term, you'll fight three types of enemies, the ones we've already seen called fodder, heavy demons, and super heavy demons. In the fodder category, there are a few more enemies, such as gargoyle or variations of the zombie. They are extremely weak, but spawn indefinitely until you've defeated all the enemies required by the arena. Therefore, they can serve as source of limited ammo, armor, or health. And entering into the heavy demon category, I like to create two subdivisions, those with weak points and those without one. But what do I mean by weak point? Well, there are certain enemies whose parts of the body can be destroyed to weaken them. For example, the Arachnotron is a long distance enemy with a plasma cannon. But you can destroy it with a precise shot and pop, no more cannon. Now, it changes its behavior and tries to get closer to you so that it can attack you, allowing you to move around the arena more freely instead of having to dodge its bullets like in a bullet hell. Next, we have the Magnus, a monstrosity with two fire cannon for arms, that also work as flamethrowers. This makes it a dangerous enemy, both at close and long range. However, you can destroy these cannons, making him able to attack you with only close range attacks. Similar to the Mankvis, the Revenant has two cannons on its shoulder, and if you break them, its only way to attack you is with melee attacks. The Kaku Demon is a mythical that shoots plasma and bites you when you get too close. It's a fierce enemy with great speed that you can't afford to lose sight of or it will cut you off guard. But because it has a mouth this big, you can make it eat a grenade, literally, and it becomes an easy glory kill. Finally, I like to group the pinkies and maker drones in the same category because their weakness is bullet go boom. Then there are the rest of heavy demons whose weakness is bullets. There's one more demon with a particular weakness. The Carcass is an enemy that fills the map with these beautiful barriers that protect enemies from their attacks. And while its body doesn't have a weak point to break, shooting and overloading one of their shields with plasma causes them to explode, damaging everyone around them, including the Carcass itself. With enemies I've described, you are constantly forced to analyze the battlefield and form strategies to take them down as efficiently as possible. You can't rely on a single weapon to kill them all. You need to consider which demon is the most dangerous, decide whether it's worth killing them, or if it's better to just incapacitate them and focus on a larger threat. Also, ammo in this game is extremely limited, so each decision you make is not just about finishing off one enemy, but also about having enough ammo to deal with the next one, or if you have enough chains of fuel. Thus, the game becomes a constant cycle of aim, shoot, move, change to prioritize. And when we talk about prioritizing and size, we can't forget about super heavy demons. Demons with so much health and power that they can be considered mini bosses on their own. You've got the classics like the cyber. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. The tyrant, the ball, the ball. The baron of hell or the archvile. They don't just look like their old school counterparts, but they also work in a similar way. The cyber. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. The tyrant is a tank, slow and big, Yay! but compensates for his lacking agility with incredible damage and playing Overwatch on its free time. Justice reigns from above! Usually, they make the battlefield work around them, so taking them down becomes a high priority. Baron of Hell is one of the weaker demons in this category, although it's worth knowing that the weak super heavy demon is still the strongest in the arena. But don't forget, he's an enemy with no apparent weakness and extremely agile. He won't let you rest until you get rid of him. Another demon who returns from Doom 2 is the Archvile, the most faithful demon to its 1994 origins. The Archvile is the weakest of the super heavy demons but he's aggressive, has semi-homing attacks and a resistance shield and the ability to summon and strengthen multiple demons regardless of whether they are cannon fodder, heavy or super heavy demons. 
The moment you realize one is nearby, all the enemies in front of you stop being your targets and become mere obstacles in your pursuit of the archfile. However, you can't let your guard down when you find it, because when you attack it, it opens the command console and teleports anywhere on the map. Then you need to find him again before he summons more enemies. When an archfile appears, the game adds more steps to its sequence. Aim, shoot, move, change or analyze, prioritize, search, shoot, move. But this game doesn't rely only on nostalgia. Doom Eternal introduces a couple of new enemies that represent the spirit that its software wanted to give this game. And the first one of these is... I thought you would appreciate the sentry I chose. The great Agadon hunters from the Telos realm, though long thought to be extinct, created to hunt only the Slayer and his night sentinels during the Unholy Crusade. Some improvements on their design have been made. Enjoy what is undoubtedly my finest work. Doom Hunter. This demon is the definition of tank, and he's so powerful that the first time you encounter him, he's classified as a boss. With melee attacks, speed, range attacks, and an energy shield, this demon forces you to use all your weapons and the space you are in to confront it. For example, before you learned that the car car's shield could explode if overloaded with plasma, right? So, applying the same logic, you could empty a plasma rifle magazine into its body, overloading his shield and faltering him with the explosion. This allows you to unleash a barrage of attacks with your other weapons to defeat it quickly. But what if you don't have plasma ammunition? Well, it's time to analyze. By closely observing Hunter, you notice that his shield doesn't cover his entire body. The tank he moves with is exposed, so you could try to freeze him in place and unleash a storm of attacks with normal grenades and the Gatling gun. Another new demon is the Marauder. Let me help you to see Slayer. An extremely dangerous enemy. A man who once was an ally of the Slayer, but was corrupted and now serves the Dark Lord. Like the Doom Hunter, the Marauder forces the players to apply extensive map knowledge, their weapon proficiency, and above everything else, test their reflexes. Most of the time, the Marauder is completely invincible. His shield blocks even the destructive power of the big fucking god, the Marauder. Marauds. <laughs> the Marauder marauds the player constantly and has three different ways of attacking. If you're too close, he'll shoot you with the same double barrel shotgun you've been using. If you're too far, he'll summon a dog that will follow you across the map while attacking with energy from his axe. And if you're a mid range distance, he will. Gotcha. And he finds an opportunity to attack you. However, the Marauder's got a weakness. When he's kind of close to you, he will prepare to attack you with a very strong attack, but his shields will go down and his eyes will become green. If you shoot at him right before his eyes glow, the Marauder will be faltered, giving you a brief chance to deal as much damage as possible. This window is so brief that you're forced to learn another skill that is really important in this game. Quick switching. The time you have to deal damage is so short that if you don't switch between multiple weapons quickly, the Marauder will regain his composure and continue attacking you. This forces the players to improve at inventory management, dominate movement mechanics, learn how to use each weapon, and leave space for each player to attack in the short time however they would like. Just by searching on YouTube how to kill the Marauder, you'll find hundreds of different ways to kill the Marauder in seconds. This presence of varied enemies, different weapons, and extensive arenas that are carefully designed to make the player use their full arsenal makes Doom Eternal's gameplay more than just run and gun. You need to make real-time strategies about what weapon you will use, how many bullets you consume, and which demon you will prioritize. 
In Doom Eternal, you find yourself making multiple strategic decisions in a matter of seconds about what's happening right now and what move you'll make in about 5 seconds later. Playing this game without thinking won't help you. To enjoy it, you need to be deeply engaged with its mechanics and it doesn't forgive your mistakes. At first, it can be a bit stressful, but it's just a matter of practicing until you enter to what the developers called the fan zone. And I know that I'm 4 years late since Loom Metano came out, but this game is so good and I needed to talk about it. And with a new game in the works and a new official support for modding, I think it's the perfect moment to speak about this game. Besides, it's never too late to talk about it, because Doom is eternal.